Have you ever wondered if your stress could be screwing up your metabolism and causing more belly fat? Well, you've probably noticed that connection and heard about it, and today we're going to talk more about the connection between cortisol, our stress hormone, and our metabolism. Stay tuned. I'm Dr. Shelley Myron. For the best, solid, simple, functional medicine-based advice on reclaiming your health and your vitality, stay tuned to my channel. I post videos every Thursday that talk just about getting your energy back, getting your vitality back, feeling good every day, and how we can do this from a functional medicine perspective. I'm a registered dietitian, functional medicine doc, and family medicine doc, so I've worked with lots of patients on improving their health and vitality. And today we are going to talk about cortisol and metabolism. So remember to subscribe, like, share, hit the bell to be notified when I post videos every Thursday. Okay, so let's dive into cortisol and metabolism. Well, what is cortisol? It's our major stress hormone, like I just said, and when our stress levels go high, our cortisol shoots high. Well, that can be either physiologic stress from um, disease, or illness, or it could be mental stress that we all deal with on a day-to-day -day basis from work, from relationships, from our hectic lives. So there's lots of ways that cortisol can be impacted. So cortisol is protective in that it we need that response when we uh, encounter stress, but we have such a chronic baseline stress on a day-to-day -day basis now that the whole protective mechanism of cortisol is kind of backfiring on us and it hasn't quite adapted to the way that our lives are set up right now. So what we wanna do is learn how to lower that stress and that's kind of, we're gonna talk about the connection there today and, and some resources for that. So cortisol, when our cortisol goes high, then it stimulates more belly fat and more accumulation here around the abdomen. So if you've noticed that during high stress times or just that in general, you may wanna to look to your stress as a potential cause of that. And then the more visceral fat, and visceral fat is the fat that we have that surrounds our organs. So the more visceral fat we have, the more um, cortisol receptors we have. And then that kind of leads to a vicious cycle of then um, getting more cortisol into the system and having uh, the belly fat accumulate. Or not into the system, but more cortisol than we have more cortisol receptors. Our body kind of takes it in easier and we accumulate more fat especially around our important organs in our um, this area, our visceral organs. So that is one uh, harmful thing of the cortisol being elevated from the chronic stress that we uh, experience in our lives. And then cortisol is a glucocorticoid, and these hormones can raise blood sugar levels. So then we have that whole connection between cortisol and blood sugar. Um, and I may refer to that as blood glucose in this video also, same thing. So when our blood sugar goes high and we're in a high stress state where the cortisol is continuing to kind of have that connection with the elevated blood sugar, then our body tends to think, well, we are in an emergency state and we need more blood sugar. So it's going to then kind of depress the whole insulin response and insulin's job is to you then take the blood sugar out of, um, our blood, blood glucose out of our blood and put it into our cells. And then it can be used for energy. But when the cortisol response is there and we are, our bodies are under the perception that we need this and we need um, our blood sugars to stay kind of high, then with the insulin response is dampened with high cortisol and we get, we become more insulin resistant and our cells don't respond taking in the blood sugar and taking it out of the bloodstream like they do in when we're not insulin resistant. Insulin resistant. Um, another thing is that we, during times of high stress and high cortisol, we can um, go into, or our bodies can convert, um, convert different energy sources into blood sugar through gluconeogenesis. So they can do, the body can do this with um, protein and then we can experience muscle mass. Thus another way that cortisol impairs our metabolism because if we lose some of that muscle mass by converting protein into blood sugar through gluconeogenesis, then we are going to have less muscle mass, obviously, and then uh, decrease our metabolism because the more muscle we have, the better our metabolism is. So we don't want to lose that muscle mass. We want more muscle, less fat. We all know that. 
So that's one way that cortisol and metabolism can interact also. And then in our current lives, when we're feeling this chronic baseline stress, a lot of times it's when we're in our work situation or our home situation and we're not being active. We have this kind of excess energy um, stimulation from the, the cortisol and then we're not expending that energy and it's not being released by activity. And then we can have more of a signal to turn it into stored body fat for body thinks we need to store it for later. So that's another way that that high cortisol and high stress can then have more of a formulation of body fat, more of a formation of body fat, less muscle mass, and there are meta therefore our metabolism is screwed up from that also. So there's a lot of different ways um, metabolically that cortisol can screw with our metabolism. So what do we want to do about this? Well, first I want you to comment down below if you've struggled with um, accumulation of, of belly fat in particular or, or body fat, or you've noticed that stress and cortisol um, from stress impair your metabolism. We can all learn from each other. If you have any comments or um, information about what's helped you, that's always great too. So in this series that we're going to be doing over the next few weeks, talking about cortisol and how it uh, interacts with different processes in our body and how we can reduce our cortisol, we're going to dive into this further. I also do have a PDF that is going to um, give more information on lowering cortisol and reducing stress. In the past, I, I'm going to link some other suggested videos above, and uh, those will help walk you through how to reduce stress. I've talked a lot about deep breathing. I've talked a lot about meditation apps and different ways to do meditation, getting outside, earthing, as we call it, getting your feet in the ground, on the grass, you know, experiencing nature. That's another way to reduce our cortisol, setting limits, reducing toxic relationships. I'm going to like I said, link some other things and then have this all in the PDF because it's a lot to go over. But I do want you to just start thinking about how your stress can affect your metabolism and your um, accumulation of body fat and just to know that connection today. So then next week, we are going to talk about how cortisol impairs our sleep and how there's kind of a vicious cycle between high cortisol and poor sleep and then what we can do about that. So be sure to check out the PDF down below on ways to reduce your cortisol. Also, there's all of our information for social media down there. You can work with us. We do um, the Dutch test a lot for cortisol. We also do saliva tests. The Dutch test is a urinary test um, where we can test all kinds of hormones. So we're a functional medicine practice and we can work with patients in Colorado. We can work with patients virtually or in person. So just check out our information down below. Also, if you um, join our email list, you can get 10% off some of these supplements we're going to be talking about that do help us to lower cortisol. So we want to work with diet, lifestyle, and sometimes supplements. And that's what I work with a lot with my patients. So thanks so much for watching today. Uh, remember to subscribe, share, like, and hit the bell notification for uh, notifications when I post every Thursday. So I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.